Coming in at number 5 we have Goldfield, Arizona. Being deemed as one of Arizona's most haunted places we have the town of Goldfield. Founded in 1893, Goldfield was a promising land for gold mining. The town grew rapidly gaining 1500 residents during its first year. The space was quick to build businesses including stores, a blacksmith, a butcher, a brewery and three saloons. Though the town of Goldfield met its fall just as quickly as it was built up. After 5 short years, the gold ran out and people began to dwindle, eventually leaving it fully abandoned, securing its ghost town status. Being classified as a ghost town doesn't necessarily mean a place is haunted by ghosts, but this is not the case for the Goldfield ghost town. There's plenty of documentation and investigations that point to Goldfield being a paranormal active ground. It is known that a mysterious figure lurks within the shadows of the Goldfield ghost town, Bordello. It is unclear who this spirit would have been in life, yet it is commonly believed he was one a miner who lived in the town. Unexplainable knocks and bangs are heard in the building and some unfortunate visitors have been scratched. This activity is attributed to a dark character who is usually seen wearing a cowboy hat. Just on the horizon of the Goldfield ghost town sits a landscape made ominous by its name and the legend surrounding it. The superstition mountains are cloaked in mystery and at the centre of many fables making them notorious among the paranormal community. The superstition mountains carry many secrets, the most famous being the location of a supposed deposit of gold and riches in the lost Dutchman's gold mine. A curse has kept this treasure safe since the days of Goldfield's mining boom. Many have set out to locate these riches and many have returned empty handed or found only death. Countless adventurers have perished in the Arizona heat pursuing this chase. Their ghosts are said to now haunt the mountainside. Other secrets of the mountain have people believing that the hill is a place where evil spirits hid and told stories of a devil that lived behind the mountain. There's also a rumoured apparition of a hugely tall skeleton named the Borrego Phantom, which appears to those exploring the mountain after dark. Another layer of creepiness is added to the mountain by the local legend that reptile looking people surface there after dark. All of these creepy mysteries are summed up pretty nicely in the Superstition Mountains name. In at number 4 we have Glen Rio, New Mexico. Found on the state border of Texas and New Mexico lies the town of Glen Rio. Founded in 1901, it was a town where wheat and cattle farmers settled and grew a community, being divided between two states made for some unusual customs in Glen Rio. The mail would arrive at a train depot on the Texas side but would have to be transported to the post office on the New Mexico side. The Texas side was part of a dry county so all the bars were on the New Mexico side. Because the gasoline tax was higher in New Mexico, all the service stations were on the Texas side. By 1920, Glen Rio had a hotel, a hardware store and a land office, as well as several grocery stores, service stations and cafes. Though Glen Rio's permanent population never rose above 30 people, the town survived with its tourist based businesses catering to the many travellers along Route 66. By 1985, only two residents remained in the small town and the Texas post office was the only business open. It too has long since closed. Other buildings have overgrown sites, missing windows or debris surrounding them. The detritus of four decades when Glen Rowe welcomed tens of thousands, fed and entertained them and sent them on their way towards Chicago or California. In at number 3 we have Nevada City in Montana. Miners settled in Nevada City in 1963 along with establishing their homes and businesses in this new town. Located in southwestern Montana, the town is one and a half miles from Virginia City. The town was thriving up until 1876 when the gold miners moved to other promising sites. In 1896, the Connery Place and Mining Company destroyed most of the city's buildings. The company dredged the gulch and later abandoned it, leaving heavy wooden barges. This abandoned town being haunted is old news as the Nevada City Hotel is reported to be frequented by the apparition of a road agent who lost their life nearby, according to online sources. Visitors have also reported hearing footsteps in the hallways and seeing shadows shadowy figures standing behind their reflections in mirrors. Additionally, the spirit of an older cowboy figure who never speaks but lurks in the hotel rooms and even sits at the bar in the Virginia city. Back when the hotel operated, guests also complained of a weeping woman, always in the same room, only to be told there was no guest in the room in question. In at number 2 we have Custer, Idaho. The mining town 
of Custer was born in 1879 by gold miners looking for their next gold hotspot. Prospectors discovered gold in what would become known as the Yankee Fork area of central Idaho in 1867. The area was worked on a small scale for more than a decade before the discovery of General Custer Mine. The General Custer Mining Company closed in 1888 and the district experienced a sharp decline. In 1899, the town of Custer has five saloons, three stores, a hotel, and three boarding houses, but the town never established even one church. By 1910, most of the mines in the area were closed and the Yankee Forks boom years came to an end. The combined population of Custer and the nearby Bonanza was just 66 people. The Silver Messenger reports just two families remaining in Custer in 1911 and then being fully abandoned the year following. Today, it has been purchased by the US Forestry Service and, in conjunction with the Friends of Custer Society, is slowly being made into a historic site. Some original buildings have already been renovated, some are in process, and many others are slated to be restored. Several buildings lost in a 1960s grass fire are due to be replaced with replicas. The forgotten town is a landmark for many people, such as tourists and especially paranormal investigators. In the old schoolhouse is a museum containing items left behind and showcases the town's unique history. Although interesting, you can't help but get an eerie feeling thinking about the people who once owned these items, as walking into one of these structures is like walking back in time. To think this town was once active with human energy and miners working every single day. And finally, in at number one, we have South Pass City, Wyoming. Only about 10 miles north of the Oregon Trail is the shell of a town that used to be a busy gold mining camp. Established in a small valley along the banks of Willow Creek, the town was born in 1867. The town was built there because gold was discovered in the Wind River Mountains. By 1868, South Pass City boasted over 250 buildings, 1,000 people, and hundreds of claims. The town was extremely busy as its half a mile long main street boasted numerous hotels, restaurants, general stores, two newspapers, doctors, a bowling alley, and dozens of saloons. The mining district continued to grow to as many as 3,000 residents. Miners looking for investors and newspapers promoting further settlement in the area exaggerated the region's amount of gold. But for South Pass City, its great success wouldn't last, and just two years after its establishment would begin to show its first signs of declining. Hitting a fall in early 1869, the town resurged briefly after outside a capital was poured into the area, but would fall again as expenses and hardships to recover the gold proved too costly for most miners. By 1872, the town was only occupied by only a few hundred people. In the end, South Pass would become a permanent ghost town. By 1949, the last of the pioneer families had moved on from South Pass City, and the buildings had fallen into disrepair. The grounds of the old town were known to be haunted, and Highway 287 that follows the route of the Oregon Trail over South Pass, which is the reason South Pass City ever existed has had its fair share of ghost sightings. According to a local ghost story, a woman was driving home from a long day in Denver. Her friend had fallen asleep in the passenger seat. After passing through Jeffrey City, the driver spotted a dark hunched figure walking toward the road in the sagebush. About a half mile later, she saw the same figure closer to the road. She noted his pig coat as he became clearer. About a half mile later, still thinking about this man and his surprising reappearance, she reached over to wake her friend and request she take a turn driving. As her friend awoke, she saw the same man at the edge of the road, just crossing the white line onto the highway next to the car. Screaming, they accelerated away and compared descriptions. It was certainly the same man. Coming in at number 5, we have Grafton, Utah. Located just a few miles away from Zion National Park in Utah, the now abandoned town of Grafton can be found. The town was originally established in 1859 when five Mormon families nearby were led to establish a town they called Wheeler to plant cotton, which would have been a profitable commodity during the Civil War. After only two years, the town was struck by a massive flood starting on January 8th of 1862 that washed away the entire town. However, the pioneers did not give up that easily and moved about a mile upstream and founded a new town named Grafton. They grew cotton, alfalfa and wheat, but life was harsh and many residents lost their life due to the diseases and various accidents. The mortality rate was also extremely high, which accounts for about 77 total graves in the nearby cemetery. The town flourished for a while despite reoccurring floods, with a church and adobe schoolhouse being built in 1886, but when the Hurricane Canal was built in 19. 
1806, many families started to move to Rockville and Hurricane, and by 1920 only three families remained in the town, and in 1944 the town's last residents, Frank Russell and his wife Ellen, moved as well. And although the town is now well maintained by the non-profit volunteer organisation of the Grafton Heritage Partnership Project, its dark past can still be felt when exploring the area. People have reported hearing ghostly footsteps over the creaky floors and the empty buildings, as well as the breath of ghostly souls on the back of their necks. The entire town gives visitors a feeling as if being watched, and the shadowy figures can sometimes be spotted in the windows. Another visitor of the ghost town visited the basement of the Russell home and claimed that they found a chair sitting in the middle of the basement with a mark on it as if someone had recently sat on it. They had been exploring for over an hour at this point and had not encountered another person on the way to town or the entire time they were there, but for some reason the print looked brand new, with not a single speck of dust on it. After filming for a few moments in the basement and recording into the silence, they felt a rush of air, as if someone had just walked past them, which scared them, and they decided it was time to leave. There are even rumours of skinwalkers lurking in the area. Even the cemetery itself has many reports of people hearing crying, laughing and chilling screams, especially late in the day and when it's overcast. Some people have even seen a woman in a dress with her hair in a bun, walking around the cemetery, sobbing, but when they approached her, she disappeared into thin air. There is no doubt that there is definitely a very uncomfortable feeling while walking around the gravestones, which isn't surprising knowing the sad history of the people laid to rest there. In at number 4 we have Deadwood, South Dakota. The town of Deadwood is located in South Dakota and gained attraction in the gold rush of 1876. In 1875, a miner named John B. Pearson found gold in a narrow canyon in these northern Black Hills. This canyon became known as Deadwood Gulch because of many dead trees that lined the canyon walls at the time. Practically overnight, the tiny gold camp boomed into a town that played by its own rules that attracted outlaws, gamblers, and gunslingers, along with gold seekers. At its height, the city had a population of 5,000, attracting larger than life Old West figures back then. The business district comprised largely of saloons, dance halls, card parlors, and bodacious bordellos. They were all hungry for gold and did whatever they had to in order to get some. The business did whatever they could to serve the gold diggers, and sometimes that led to a little bit of conflict. Because of this, the now ghost town still lives with stories of its dead residents haunting present day hotels and saloons. In 1876, Deadwood survived a smallpox epidemic that nearly wiped out the whole town. There were so many infected that multiple tents were erected to quarantine the stricken. In addition, it suffered three major fires. One devastating fire occurred on September 26, 1879, destroying more than 300 buildings and consuming the belongings of many inhabitants. Many numerous economic hardships also followed, pushing it to the verge of becoming another Old West ghost town. One of the most paranormally active sites in the ghost town is the Adam House. Built in 1892, after owner W. E. Adams had a stroke on the premises, his wife was so disturbed by the sounds of his ghost still walking around, rocking the rocking chairs and so forth, that she moved and left the house untouched, exactly as it was when he died. Now visitors and employees report having seen a rocking chair rock on its own, encountered a shadowy man standing at an upstairs window, and heard voices and footsteps in rooms throughout the house. In at number 3 we have Garnet, Montana. Found in Montana, the abandoned town of Garnet was another gold rush town that drew thousands of hopeful miners. Between 1862 and 1916, gold was mined from the area. During the peak of the town, it had hotels, saloons, schools, and stores in the midst of the town's biggest years. A 1912 fire burned down half of the town, and what was lost was not rebuilt. Many of the remaining structures were in poor condition even when they were lived in and regularly visited. This marked the decline of the town as after 1917, the mine began to offer less and less, and by the time of World War I, the town was almost fully abandoned. Garnet is perhaps the best preserved coast town in the state of Montana. There are plenty of people who believe the abandoned buildings are still home to some of the residents who once lived there. Some visitors have reported hearing laughter and music coming from Kelly's saloon, which is the most common occurrence. I quote, We didn't experience anything bordering on the supernatural during our visit, but we did find the beautifully preserved artifacts to be windows into Garnet's incredible past. Coming in at number 2 we have Jerome, Arizona. Located in Arizona, you will find the ghost town of Jerome. Once a copper mining town, Jerome was the third largest town in the early 1900s. Its streets were filled with 30 37 saloons, 13 bordellos, and a meagre four churches in 1917, and again in 1926 after a mine blast damaged the original. A series of ill fated events at this site would almost lead one to call it cursed. When the Great Depression hit, conditions in the town took a sharp downturn. Plagued with man made disasters and poor fortune,
Constitution, Jerome's population gradually dwindled from thousands to somewhere between 20 to 50 residents. Finally, in 1950, the town was abandoned for good. A number of visitors have recounted other mysterious sightings. Visual apparitions range from human shaped figures that roam the halls and stairways of the old hotel to a friendly animal that is said to scratch a meow at the doors. Additionally, one of the town's most well known ghosts is said to lurk at the town's community centre. Formerly called Lawrence Memorial Hall, the building is more often familiarly termed Spook Hall due to several strange happenings. With all the other apparitions wandering about this historic town, the cemetery, of course, known as the most haunted place in the whole town. Visitors here have made numerous reports of dark figures moving about, the sound of ethereal footsteps, and the sounds of distant voices. The old cemetery includes graves dating from 1897 to 1942. And finally in the number one we have Cerro Gordo, California. Cerro Gordo is a ghost town located in Death Valley and is considered one of the best abandoned places in California. Cerro Gordo means fat hills in Spanish, it was named this for the vast amount of silver it contained. By the end of 1869 the city flourished and became well known for its promising business. By 1871 Cerro Gordo was well established as a mining town. The American hotel was completed that year as were several other permanent structures, a general store, restaurants and saloons. At its height, the town had 5,000 residents. In 1875, Cerro Gordo suffered a series of setbacks, necessitating the shutdown of its furnaces. These problems resulted from a scarcity of ore in the mine, which had lasted for several months, and the temporary drying up of its water supply. In addition, by late 1876, a fire accident happened through some of the mine buildings and the union shaft, and the furnaces were closed the following February due to the disaster. A more lethal blow was dealt by falling lead and silver prices, effectively ending this era of activity at Cerro Gordo. Because of all the tragedy that occurred in Cerro Gordo, there has been multiple paranormal investigations held at the grounds of the abandoned town. While the new owner of the town was purchasing it, he was warned that they might have some visitors hanging around, and by visitors they meant spirits. One of the now owner's ghost stories goes along the lines of as he was walking toward the bunkhouse, he looked at the window, the curtain pulled to the side and a little face poked out. Under the assumption that the contractors were staying in the bunkhouse, he asked when they were leaving and he was told that they're gone for two weeks. So a little uneasy he locked up the door and went for a hike. By the time he got back the kitchen light was on even with the lock still on the door. In at number 5 we have Batstow Village in New Jersey. Located in New Jersey, Batstow Village is a historic community centred around the Batstow Iron Works. The site was ideal for iron work because there was water for mills, abundant wood for charcoal and naturally occurring bog iron. The well preserved and lovingly restored village dates back to 1766. As the operation of ironwork grew, so did the village. There were mills, cottages, and over three dozen structures and buildings still remain, many from the early 1800s. But by mid 1800s, iron production declined due to the discovery of coal ore. As the need for iron declined, then glass making was pursued by the town, but at that point, the population already started to dwindle. When Joseph Wharton purchased the property, he primarily focused on forestry and agricultural endeavors. After Joseph Wharton passed in 1909, the property was managed by a trust. The state of New Jersey began buying the land in the 1950s. The last resident to leave the town left in 1936, but not before strange disappearances occurred. According to local legend and a bunch of conspiracy theorists, Ong's hat offers a portal to a different dimension. In the 1970s, a few professors from Princeton fled there after being mocked by their quantum physics theories. This is when they claimed to have discovered interdimensional travel. According to other local legends, the devil is the 13th born son of the Leeds, the first inhabitants of New Jersey. Mother Leeds gave birth to a healthy baby, who within minutes transformed into this beast. This old ghost town is said to be a hotspot for the Jersey Devil activity, and in the last 50 years there have been numerous reports and encounters with the beast in this area. Some of these encounters include strange tracks along with hearing screams just outside of the village. One sighting of the Jersey Devil comes from a group that saw the creatures crossing the street in front of them. When visiting the village, some say you can feel his presence as if he's walking right behind you. In at number 4 we have Bodie, California. Located up in the Bodie Hills in Mono County, California near Yosemite, in 1859 four miners found a good place to look for gold in the hills near the California Nevada border. Bodie died in a blizzard not long after, but a small mining town sprung up at their camp. The town was home to 10,000 people. Bodie was a mining camp in 1859 where people had seen gold in its hills. Eventually it turned into a well populated town. Though like most mining towns it saw its peaks, its losses 
and then its decline. Fast forward to 1962 and the town would be fully abandoned. Although it already showed signs of decline with dwindling numbers at the start of the 20th century, a series of fires forced the last remaining residents to flee the town, leaving it almost exactly as it was in the early 1900s. With the dinner tables still set, shops are still stocked with supplies and restaurants are still poised to serve long forgotten meals. Today the 110 silent buildings sit spaced out for traffic and people that aren't there. Buildings such as a barbershop, a church, a mill, a morgue and a leaning hotel are hulled up by a beam and have been left untouched for 100 years. Though it has been left abandoned for years, some of the buildings are in a crumbling state of decay, while others stand strong full of their original items but long devoid of their owners. There were also 60 saloons and thus a fair amount of danger. People were robbed and crimes occurred quite often, though the curse of Bodhi has nothing to do with the fires or the sh it started because people started taking artifacts from abandoned buildings. They'd take weather-worn shoes or pieces of glass from shattered windows. Somebody once ran off with a piano. Those items may seem like they have no value, but all objects carry equal significance in telling the story of Bodhi. Thus the curse of Bodhi emerged, if you take something from Bodhi, bad luck will come around to get you. Because of the rumor spreading of a curse, people who stole items would send them back, often including heartfelt apology letters, explaining that they didn't expect their fish to pass or their romantic life to fail from stealing from Bodhi. In at number three we have Tlingua in Texas. The town of Tlingua, Texas was once a bustling mining town full of life, wealth and promise. Today it's a ghost town with abandoned mine shafts, a general store, an old jail, a church and multiple ghost houses. Tlingua became of interest to local miners in the late 1800s when they discovered cinnabar, a red mercury sulfide. A man by the name of Jack Dawson discovered that mercury could be extracted from the cinnabar and by 1900 there were four mining companies in the area with a population of over 2,000 people. The Chaisos Mining Company owned the entire town of Tlingua. At one point they built a general store, a post office, a hotel, a school, a theatre and even a telephone service. Though conditions in the mine were tough, with the 7 day work week being the standard, working long days in the desert heat led many miners to lose their lives in the mines. To make matters worse, the Chaisos Mining Company even paid their workers in coupons, which could only be spent at the company owned store. The decline started started once the mines dried up, companies left and the people left with them. One of the scariest parts of the town is the church, which sits on the hill above the ghost town. One quote says, as we approached the church the door opened all by itself. Inside the church, visitors report an eerie feeling when entering the church. Moreover, several others report experiencing blackouts, blurred vision and even hallucinations while exploring the abandoned town. Researchers theorize that this is due to low frequency sound waves in the area that are able to alter people's perceptions of the things around them. and as well as disorient them. In at number two we have Ludlow, Colorado. Located about 12 miles north of Trinidad, Ludlow, Colorado is a ghost town known for an infamous event in 1914. A former mining camp, it was the location of the Ludlow Massacre. Beginning in 1910, the resident coal miners grew unhappy over their dangerous working conditions and began to debate a strike. By 1913, a strike had begun, much to the dismay of owner John B. Rockefeller. On April 20th, 1914, there was a massacre in Ludlow, where the Colorado National Guard and Colorado Fuel and Iron Company guards attacked miners, burning their tents to the ground. Known as the Ludlow Massacre, 25 people lost their lives. The massacre was the height of the Colorado Coalfield War, which began a year earlier in 1913. Two coal mining counties, Las Animas and Hurufano, were the centers of the conflict. The United Mine Workers of America led the strike against the Colorado Fuel and Iron, owned by Rockefeller. They were upset over the horrible working conditions. Both parties led attacks back and forth over the years. Today, Today, the old company town of Ludlow still stands as a ghost town and the site of the tent city is also kept reserved, now under the care of the United Mine Workers of America. A monument to the deceased was also built by the union at the site. In addition, the cellar where so many innocents perished is still in place. The doorway can still be seen and the dark depths of the pit can still be viewed. Though this isn't recommended as many people who visit the abandoned ghost town report a strange feeling when looking through the doorway and even worse, possible whispers around them with an unexplainable source. And finally, in in number one, we have Helltown, Ohio. The abandoned town known as Helltown can be found in the Suyahoga Valley in Ohio. Thus, it's an eerie deserted town known by locals to be haunted. No people live in the area anymore, though there are still remnants of the lives of former residents left behind. The whole town is surrounded by hazardous roads that seemingly lead to nowhere. Locals believe this was done to confuse any wandering explorers. But the Helltown Church seems to have inspired the town's ominous name. The tiny white church is in the center 
of Helltown and is central to all local theories. Some say the church was a place of worship for practicing Satanists who still lurk around the closed off roads, hoping to recruit unwelcome visitors. Others believe the town was evacuated after a chemical spill that resulted in bizarre mutations of the residents and animal population. The legend of the Peninsula Python stems from this theory. There even sits an abandoned school bus in the town with legends of its own. The story goes that the bus was carrying a group of high school students who were going to one of the ski resorts near Boston when an elderly woman flagged down the bus. She was in a panic state and explained that there was a young boy in her house who was seriously hurt. The bus driver, in an attempt to help, turned down her driveway and drove into the woods hoping to help the boy. When the bus approached the house, Satan worshippers swarmed it and sacrificed all those on board. The bus sat back there for over 30 years, standing as a warning to all who decide to venture into Helltown. A local paranormal investigator set out to research the abandoned town and to his surprise, what he discovered was truly frightening. He describes Helltown as not just truly abandoned, but is home to many spirits and hauntings. His personal experience with a ghost encounter was returning to his car to find strange people looking into his car windows. Both times the people vanished as soon as they saw him approaching the car before he had a chance to speak to them. <laughs>